That's right, Revit 2024 is out now. And for those that might be new around here, here's how to get it downloaded. First, you open a browser, you head on over to your browser and go to manage.autodesk.com. You get logged in, you go to your products and it will be in your download portal as of right now. Downloading it looks like this, and then you can go through the install process and you'll be good to go. So with that installed, we're going to jump into Revit 2024 and look at a few new features that I think are worth highlighting. All right, here we are. This is Revit 2024 in all of its glory. The first thing you're going to notice is of course, it is a dark mode. That's going to be the big new feature, if you will, in Revit. Uh, it's one of those things that is now included. And if your computer's in dark mode, it's going to mimic your system settings by default. This one, it's, it's a feature, which is kind of funny. I find that interesting. Uh, but it is there and I know for one I'm super excited because I've always wanted to look like I'm working in AutoCAD again. <laughs> Jokes aside, it is exciting. It does work for our top level UI so we'll take a look at that real quick. Just to kind of show it too under file options, we are able to change the colors here in the interface. So by default it is on system setting so that mimics what you have set on Windows but you can go back to light or just pick dark and so on. In this case, I'll go ahead and leave it on system settings. That way it mimics that for me and we'll take a look at it. So that's kind of the dark mode. The canvas is colored by default, which I know a lot of people aren't going to want right up front. So if you go to the view tab and the windows panel, you can change the canvas theme very quickly. That feature alone is really awesome because this is probably how I'll end up running it more often than not. The overall dark mode, uh, it's still kind of up in the air if I'm going to use it full time. It is the top level UI only. So if you go into dialogues, those are going to be a light mode, which is kind of weird, but I think this is a good first step. So something to keep in mind. Uh, so that's it for dark mode. I'll have it open for the rest of this uh, tutorial or overview. Uh, I'll have that enabled, but feel free to check it out and see how you think about it. Let me know below what you think about the dark mode. Kind of a weird one as a feature, but we have it now after years of asking for it. So people have been asking for it for a very long time and we finally got it. All right, the next feature I wanna highlight is actually right here on this start sheet. So generally speaking, you're going to see that we are in some new sample files. So no more of the L-shaped building. This release comes with a whole lot of new sample files that have a lot of great things in them. They have links, they have sheets, the links line up, finally, and a whole lot of the new features highlighted. As always, we have all these little question marks that you can click on that help you learn more about this Revit release. So that's really cool as well. On this sheet, we do have a schedule. So this is going to be our sheet index and it is a schedule element in Revit. If we select it, we will see that we have a new feature to resize the rows. If you click on this dropdown, you can resize all of the rows or the rows with images in them. This is a really cool feature because we used to have to do this to resize rows by adding a column with like a oversized character or something. It was like ridiculous. Now you can just do that. So if you go ahead and click on resize rows, I'll say all, and you can specify a custom size. So we'll resize them all to half an inch and all of our rows are now bigger. Really cool. And this also highlights another one of those features, which is the row striping. And that's been in Revit for a little while, but this shows that with the sample model, which is pretty cool. So resizing rows uh, is pretty nice. Being able to resize ones with images is nice as well. I really like that feature because you can kind of be more specific if you really needed to for something like a room data sheet or something like that, which is pretty cool. Uh, so that's another feature that's really nice. It's really cool to have. Uh, what we're going to go ahead and do too is jump into a floor plan real quick. And I wanna show something that I see myself using all the time as well. So in a floor plan view or any view for that matter, if it's on a sheet and you right click, you can actually open the sheet that the view is on. So you can do this right from the view in Revit. So if I right click on that, open sheet, it takes me to the sheet that that view is on. This is really cool because we can start to go to the sheet that we're actually going to print or whatever. So now that's an option that we have available to us, which is really nice as well. Uh, that one, and I've wished for that for a long time and they finally have it. And it's really useful when you're working like in production or something like that. So a really great feature as well. Another one that's kind of subtle that I thought was really interesting is under the manage tab, project parameters. We have a whole bunch of different project parameters in here. 
But the really cool part is those are now going to sort alphabetically in our project uh, on the properties palette. So if we look at our project parameters, they are now going to be alphabetic. That's something that I didn't even realize they weren't alphabetic in some of the older versions. Back in the day before the family editor had the ability to edit those, you had a bunch of hacks to edit them to organize them. The project browsers just always had them not in order. They're in order of creation. So that's another thing that's been added. So I encourage you to check it out in Revit 23, 22, 21, whatever you're in uh, to see what they look like. Uh, but those now sort alphabetically, which is kind of cool. Uh, it might also bug you. I don't know. Let me know below what you think. My dog went to one of your parks and ate another dog's feces, and I'm going to sue you for that. One thing that I spend a lot of time on when a new Revit version comes out are the API documentation. So within the API documentation, they highlight new things that are coming out in the API or have been introduced with this version. In this version, there are three really big things that I'm excited about. So we are able to start to reload groups from a path now with the API. So what you can do is you can select a group, give it a path and tell it to reload the group from a library. That's really cool because if you use model groups, which you should be using model groups, you're able to start to reload the, those definitions now, almost like their families, which is really nice. Another feature is a purge unused API. Uh, that API allows us to isolate elements that might not be used in our Revit project. So that's never been available before in the API. So if you go to manage purge unused, these 506 things we can purge. You were never able to figure out what those things were in the API. You had to use all sorts of weird workarounds. As a matter of fact, Dynamo has purge nodes in there that use workarounds. So those have been available for a little bit, but now they're fully supported in the API, which is exciting. So we have get all unused elements or get unused elements. And just like the UI version, you're going to have to work your way down three times to work with it. Uh, so let's go ahead and open up Dynamo and we'll look at some of the new things in here as well. All right, with Dynamo open, we'll highlight a few more of the API changes along the way as well, but let's look at Dynamo at this point. So under Dynamo about, we will see that we are on Dynamo version 2.17.0. This is the first time that we're seeing this version of Dynamo in Revit. And I did a video on this version when it came out as a core release a little while back. So I'll link that below as well if you want a more thorough overview of it. But essentially we have access to quite a few new things that are really worth using specifically in a Revit context. So if we go to Dynamo preferences, we now have the ability to import and export our preferences. So dynamo settings.xml, the file that controls the dynamo settings, you can now import and export. This is a great step in the right direction for deploying dynamo to a firm, which has always not been the best process. They're starting to be very aware of making that process better, which is exciting. So that's a feature in here available to us that you can import and export those settings very quickly. And that includes pretty much anything you see in this UI is in that menu. You have everything from your run settings, your package mapping, your visual settings for group styles, all these kind of things. And once again, that video uh, that I'll link below has these group styles and things like that highlighted in it. So be sure to check that out also. So we have kind of all these different settings available to us. We also have, Along with that, we also have a whole lot of other bug fixes when it comes to Dynamo. Uh, in regards to nodes, there's not like a whole lot of new Revit nodes at this point. They did expand upon the material libraries a bit. So under the material category, a few of these are new, which is really exciting because previously the only way to get these nodes was with a custom package and that would be Archilab in this case. So we now have some of that out of the box, which is really cool. Piggybacking on that with API changes, another thing that we're able to do is start to mess with link overrides for link settings. So if I were to come into this view and click on the view template, because there's a view template assigned, we can go to the visibility graphic overrides for the link. We have by host view for these. If you wanted to modify your link down by the category, you have to come in and modify this. Historically, there is no API access for anything graphics related for Revit links, which just stinks. This year, they have finally added the ability to mess with this slightly. The downside is you're only able to change this by host view setting. Yeah, I know. 
not the best thing, but you can change it from host view, linked view, or custom. So there's the three settings available to us. You can't modify anything in any of the other tabs at this point, but I do think them adding the ability to at least set this option is a step in the right direction. Uh, I haven't finished them yet, but I'm currently working on rhythm nodes for this. So if we were to go to rhythm and we go to elements Revit link, we have the get link overrides. So that's right there. And then we have this link graphic settings that defines a link graphic settings object. So let's go ahead and do active view to get our active view right now to take a look at the one that at least gets the active view. The setting, I'm still working on that node at this point. We'll get our links. And then I'll just pick electrical. Doesn't really matter to me. And we'll go to structural, active view. Oh, I think I am still in my setting. Let's go ahead and drop my view template. because I would have to work down to the view if I really wanted to see those. We'll refresh our view. I think hit escape and now it's running. Uh, so if we have a view template assigned, that's where it gets a little weird. So now we have that set, we do get those linked graphic settings. At this point, I don't have the nodes expanded enough to edit those a whole lot, uh, but we are able to define one by a visibility. So the way this node should be working is we have by link view, by host view and custom. So the idea being if you type in custom, you would define a graphic setting as custom and then you can go through and actually set the overrides. Uh, so we'll give it a try. It might not work right now, but hey, we'll go ahead and give it a shot real quick. And yeah, we're getting kind of a weird one here that custom's not supported in the API. Like I said, very early on in these um, settings, so they're not going to work all the way at this point for me. But those APIs have been added, so that's really exciting because in the future, we might be able to mess with those graphic settings, I hope. So if anyone from the Revit dev team's listening or anything, please give us those other categories in the link settings. That's what we really want. This is a step in the right direction though, so that's really appreciated, which is awesome. Uh, other than that, there are just a few other just uh, better life fixes in Revit. Uh, there's probably a ton of other features in here that I'm skipping, but that's okay. And we'll just go ahead and do create group and I'll show you some of the, an example of that. There are a ton of just random UIs that you can now resize that you couldn't before. That's an enhancement, I guess, but like, one of those things that you won't really notice it, but it is there. So the team is pretty aware of some of those things that kind of get you over time, which is cool. So that's available as well. Uh, another thing that I'll close out on is a really big thing. So in addition to this sample model, just being really thorough, having links, having sheets, having documentation, being a good example uh, for the most part, we just have all this stuff available to us. They've also went ahead and built out entire site models, which is really cool. This is one of the first time you see site models modeled this thoroughly with sidewalks and curbs and all this stuff. And what that's using is a new element in Revit called a topo solid. What is a topo solid? A topo solid is basically a floor element, but a topography category for you. So under massing and site, we do have the ability to model topo solids. They inherit from the floor class in the API, which means that you can draw them with sketches and all those kind of things, just like you would a floor. So they're very familiar in that way, and they are a solid element, so you can start to calculate cut and fill, shape them, draw curbs, sidewalks, all that good stuff. Huge addition for landscape architects and site designers. You can start to implement this stuff and create really cool sites, and there's a ton of it in these sample models for you to look at, which is awesome. Uh, that's really great. When I was at an architecture firm, we did a ton of modeling for rendering purposes. So we'd always have sidewalks and grass and planters and all that stuff for rendering. Speaking of rendering, at Autodesk University 2023, they announced that Twin Motion would be included with Revit. Everyone was really excited until they tried to install it, and it was this really difficult process. Revit 2024 
represents a tighter coupling of twin motion and Revit. If you don't know what twin motion is, it is a real time rendering engine for Revit and a variety of platforms. And it's now included in Revit so that we can just view it uh, within twin motion. I'll link a video below from Jeff, the Revit kid, because he uses it a ton and he has videos that give you a full overview of how to use it. What's really exciting in this release is if you go to the view tab, you have the twin motion button. You can literally just export these things really quickly. The exporter's coupled in, twin motion's coupled in, and you also install it through your manage account. So anything that's Revit related in your manage account that includes twin motion. So really cool. I encourage you to check it out because it used to be something that you had to pay for separate from Revit. It's now included. And these projects specifically have a whole lot of materials to really make them look great in it for you to fly around, which is cool. Uh, so you will see that these renderings are actually from Twin Motion, which is really neat. So another thing that I encourage you to check out that comes with this release, you also have it in 2023. So check it out there as well. It's a little harder install, but I would encourage you to also test it in Revit 23. Uh, other than that, pretty solid release. I, there's not a whole lot that you're opening up and freaking out about. Last year with Revit 23, Dynamo came out in the dark mode for the first time. So it was a huge Dynamo release here. Dynamo player was revamped, all these things. The big thing here is we're starting to see a tighter coupling of some of these things. So like the rendering engine, Dynamo is more stable, opening up some more API and a whole lot of stuff for landscape architects and site designers. Overall, I think this is a really cool release. The dark mode. They're going to tout that as the biggest new thing ever. I think it's nice. It's a nice to have and I'll use it. It's just one of those things once again that it's uh, it's one of those things that you thought would always be there and it just took a little while, but now it's there. Did I miss anything? Was there any other feature that you are really excited about that I skipped over? I purposely didn't cover everything because there's a whole list. I don't want to make this video forever long. So yeah, let me know below if there's anything that you're really excited about, any comments you have, and I'll try to answer all of them. And other than that, I look forward to building nodes for this release, publishing them in Rhythm, and opening them up to the community. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thanks for checking out this video, and we'll see you in the next one. I found a sandwich in one of your parks, and I want to know why it didn't have mayonnaise. <laughs>